the 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth and formed man in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace, in the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees, in the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt, around the thousandth year since David was anointed king, in the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, in the year 752, since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you are Emmanuel. God is with us. Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh who dwells among us. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, whom have made this most sacred night, radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom. A light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains, by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Today is born a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Today is born a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Today is born a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Today is born. his holy name. Today is born a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Today is born a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell God's glory among all the nation. Among all people, God's marvelous deed. Today is born a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. 
Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them be joyful. Then let all the trees of the forest rejoice. Today is born a Savior. Jesus Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior. Jesus Christ the Lord. They shall rejoice before the Lord who comes to govern the earth to govern the world with justice and all the peoples with faithfulness. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Good news and great joy to all the world. Today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Hallelujah.
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, his, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Way back when I was a teenager, I remember watching a movie. Now, I was a science fiction fan in my day, and this movie was about a spaceship that landed on Earth. An alien came out carrying a box on his chest. He walked down the steps from the spaceship carrying this box, and soldiers were ordered to shoot him, and they did. Later on, they discovered that in the box was a cure for cancer. Can you imagine that? A cure for cancer. But it was too late. They had killed the alien and now they could not open the box. What do you imagine God would give to humanity if he came to us from heaven with a gift? Would it be a cure for some horrible disease or in some way to stop tsunamis or earthquakes? 
Well, of course, God has come down to earth, and He has given us the greatest present of all, not possessions or money or health, but a baby, a human baby who is also God. God gave us a baby. Firstly, because he didn't want to frighten us, and no one is frightened of a baby. How often does he say in the Christmas story, do not be afraid, to Zechariah, to Mary, to Joseph, to the shepherds, God says, do not be afraid. Secondly, because every baby is a promise of new possibilities, a new future, and this baby especially, because he is the future. Baby Jesus wants to take us to our future where all our dreams will be realized. Because every baby is a sign of love, this is the secret of babies. Babies are made by love. It is the love of a mother and father which causes a baby to come into the world. And in the case of the baby Jesus, it was the love of the Blessed Virgin Mary which cooperated with the love of God himself. Because a baby knows how to just be without ambition, without plans, just to be happy. In this way, babies show us what it will be like for us in heaven, just happy to be there together in our Father's house. God gave us a baby because every baby is innocent and totally accepting of us, non-judgmental, a baby does not compare us to other people, but takes us just as we are because they are innocent themselves and happy to be themselves. And especially this baby, because he is innocence. God gave us a baby because every baby is powerless weak, helpless, vulnerable, dependent. And that's why we are happy to accept this baby, because it needs us to give it a home. And finally, God gave us a baby because every baby, but especially this baby, is an invitation to friendship. This baby wants to be our friend, to be loved by us. Let's think a little bit about this invitation to enter into friendship with Jesus. Because Jesus is so attractive, we want to be friends with him. In fact, we want to become like him so that our friendship will become more and more solid. And that's why baby Jesus is so endlessly fascinating. He captures our heart because he is everything we would like to be and everything that we are meant to be. Once we are friends with Jesus, our parents 
can relax. They have no more worries about us because with Jesus as our friend, we are always safe. Friendship with Jesus gives meaning to our lives. It's what we were created for, to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to be happy with him forever. Dear parents, this relationship is not easy. It's not a game. You can't play at it. At, you can't play it at Christmas and Easter time. It won't work that way. Friendship with Jesus is demanding. We have to work at it. It's a total commitment. You can't turn it off and on. For a Catholic, that means coming to this Eucharist every week and celebrating with Jesus' other friends. It means being ready to say sorry in the sacrament of reconciliation when necessary. It means daily family prayer and good works. You, dear parents, will have to answer for how you gave your child an opportunity to come to know Jesus. You have a serious responsibility, which you took on when you asked for baptism for your child. Jesus is not someone else's baby. He is ours. We can't hand him back. He claims us. We can't pack him up in the cupboard after Christmas like the plaster baby in the crib. Friendship with Jesus calls us to change our ways, our life. It calls us to be different from this world. It makes us grow on the inside and gives healing to our own woundedness. Jesus makes us whole again. He gives life. He gives peace. Already here on earth, but most especially in heaven. And that's where we can all truly say, Merry Christmas. In a moment, we'll be praying the creed. Where we usually bow, we're going to be kneeling. So let us first stand. Next, gently put down your kneelers. And as we come to that moment, we'll pause and then kneel and then recite those next two lines. And then we'll pause again and stand as we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, 
He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that's one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this most holy night, when the goodness and kindness of God, our Savior, have appeared, let us, dear brothers and sisters, humbly pour forth to him our prayers, trusting not in our own good works, but in his mercy. Our response is, may your birth bring peace to all. May your your birth birth bring peace peace to all. Like the shepherds who watched their flocks that cold winter's night, may Pope Francis and all priests and deacons be confirmed in their calling and blessed with strength and wisdom. We pray, may May your birth bring peace to all. Like the angels hailing the birth of our Savior, may our brave military men and women who herald freedom for all people be held in the palm of God's hand and granted a safe return home. We pray, may your birth bring peace to all people. Like the Virgin Mary and humble Joseph, may those in religious vocations and those in discernment continue to follow the light of Christ and be strengthened on their journey, we pray. May your birth bring peace to all. May Emmanuel, God with us, embrace those suffering from sadness, illness, poverty, or spiritual turmoil. We pray. May your birth bring peace to all. May God bless the friends and family that are unable to be with us this night. And for the dead, in particular, the deceased members of Most Blessed Sacrament Parish. May they share in the eternal songs of the angels and the gladness of the shepherds. We pray. May your earth bring peace to all. For each of us, may Christmas hope, peace, joy, and love fill our lives and become part of all that we say and do and for the prayers we hold in our hearts on this Christmas Eve. We pray. May your birth bring peace to all. We pray, O Lord our God, that the Virgin Mary who merited to bear God and man in her chaste womb, may commend the prayers of her faithful in your sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. 
for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being in paying their homage to you the eternal God living and true celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary the Immaculate Virgin brought forth the Savior for this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph her spouse your blessed apostles and martyrs Peter and Paul Andrew James John Thomas James Philip Bartholomew Matthew Simon and Jude Linus Cletus Clements Sixtus Cornelius Cyprian Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those who have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, <clears throat> giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us 
who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace.
And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please be seated. Pray to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. I believe there's someone coming. Please stand. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Christmas, everyone.
Oh. 